Welcome to Plask. Plask is an AI based motion capture animation software. What it does, it alleviates the need to have an actual physical motion capture suit, but pretty much it's a tool that will help you to extract data from a video and that data will be transferred into a 3D model. We're going to use Mixamo.com to help us gain access to a customized model. So if you have a customized model and you wanted to get it on Plask, this is the tool that will help you to do it. Mixamo.com. So what you're going to need in order to use Mixamo, you're going to need a 3D model. Now you can choose to use 3D models that are built into Mixamo by default. And that is accessed through what is known as characters. So for this particular tutorial, we're going to assume that you have your own model and you wanted to bring it to Mixamo. If you did have that, you would hit upload and then you would add your 3D model here as an FBX file, an object file, or a zip file. So that's up to you. A good example would be, let me go and try to find one of my models and you would have to put it, place your model on your hard drive and once you got it some part of your hard drive you should be able to add it so say this was my model here it's an FBX file let's see what it does I'm just gonna try to add a random model just for y'all folks to see what you can do with utilizing Mixamo in conjunction with Plask so this is my model it's not mine hundred percent I got it from a free website a free 3d model website so basically what you would do this is the software side of Mixamo where you're able to auto rig characters which is why I chose to use Mixamo in the first place Mixamo has the ability for you to auto rig your characters what you have to do is use these markers that you see on the screen these little circles and you basically place these markers at key points that indicate those particular body positions so the, sh the chin the wrists the elbows the knees you just make sure that you place these and it should be set with symmetry it says right here use symmetry so make sure that that check mark is checked but it's usually checked by default so you pretty much drop these markers in in the locations that are required and then you click next after that all the rigging is done it's not complicated and hopefully your model is rigged on Mixamo it's gonna go in and do its own thing because it's automated after you click that next button it says that the auto rigger algorithm takes about two minutes or so but pretty much it moves a lot faster sometimes so what we're gonna do next is click next so that character is auto rigged hit next again and now I can take this character and I can move it over to Plask but what I want to do I don't want to take it as it is with this animation what I want to do is go up here to animations and type in T pose sometimes a model will come in with the T pose automatically built into it or you might have to search so let's see what we can do we hit enter and then we're gonna apply the T pose that you see up here in the upper left corner so now the character has a T pose and now we're gonna click download when you click download on the upper right area what that allows you to do is download it as a FBX so you can download it as a FBX binary file or .FBX and then hit the, the orange download button. After that, what you'll be able to do is take this FBX and you can rename it if you want to. That's up to you. I would rename it if you already have other file names that are similar in one of your file folders. We're going to call it T-Pose Model, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is put it in a folder where I have my other models at. 
and I'm going to create a separate folder for this project. So I'm going to call this a NIM7. It don't matter what you call your folders, you create whatever names that you want. The whole purpose is, is to create a separate folder from your regular folders so you know where your files are stored at on your computer. So I have multiple subfolders that this folder is within in the file itself. So file management is really, really crucial when you're doing this kind of stuff. Let's go to Plask. I already logged into Plask. What you want to do when you're on the Plask website, this is the main website, Plask.ai. And by the way, if I did not mention it, which I believe I didn't, Plask is an, an actual website. So you don't have to download it on your computer. You can pretty much get on to Plast.ai and then create your own account. Once you create your account, you'll be able to access it. And for now, Plask is accessible for free, 100% free, because it's currently in a beta phase. It's being tested, but it's eventually going to have a premium scale model on it where you can actually pay for different levels and different tiers for using Plask. Let's go on and try to move that T pose that I got onto Plask. To do that, you hit the plus button in the upper left corner near library and then hit select files or you can drag and drop it in. So we'll just uh, drag and drop it because I already have it here in my file folder. And that should take, it says up to three minutes, but it's gonna be much faster, I believe. And now I brought in my model. So my model shows up here below the default model. So what you want to do, if you want to bring any of the models into the screen, you can drag it from the left and drop it. And the model should show up in the screen. So uh, if you learn from the tutorials, you'll get to understand the navigation. It's pretty simple. You depress the alternate key on the keyboard and use your left click mouse button to rotate by moving it across from left to right. And then you can scroll in by using your mouse scroll wheel. And you can pan by using the right click mouse button, pan and left or right, up or down. So that's that right there. Very simple. And then all you need to do in order to bring in your animations, you hit the plus button again. And what you will do is bring in a pre recorded video, or you can click on the upper right corner where you see this camera tab and go in via webcam and try to extract motion capture data from your actual movement in a webcam now they have recommendations on the best ways to extract that data what i recommend is that you have an actual tripod holding your webcam or if not a tripod have it right in front of your laptop i recommend a laptop because a regular desktop computer will be in a room where it has limited space for movement a laptop could free your space and you can bring it downstairs into a living room bring it outside if you wanted to outdoors and or you can bring it into like a garage space or a gym or wherever you want to bring it in a park etc so those are my recommendations uh, in terms of getting a stabilized motion and also you want to get the full body of your actual whoever you're recording yourself or someone else you want to get that full body into the view of the camera lens you don't want any of the parts of the body to go out of the camera lens. the reason why is because the data is going to be captured if you want to get that video to be the most highest quality motion capture for an AI based motion capture. You want that to be stable motion that you can see the camera can see every single limb and that way the motion won't get janky and unstable. You're going to end up having janky motion to some degree, but Plask is very accurate at providing high quality results as long as that camera lens is not unstable and the ground plane that you're viewing of the actual footage isn't moving around. So don't move the camera around while you're you know, providing that footage. Try to make it as stable as possible. And when the feet move around, it's basically going to show up as accurate as possible. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna apply a video. So let's go hit the plus. I already have pre-recorded videos. If you choose a pre-recorded video from like the online world on, on the web or whatever, Make sure you get the permission to use it. So I use a website known as Pexels. It has tons of video footage that you can use for free. It's in the public domain and it won't cause an issue nine times out of 10. You should have no, no problems with 
pre-recorded content from an official public domain website like Pexels. We're going to click open. We're going to bring it in. Um, then we're going to go for extracting it. So we have to click confirm and that brings it in. So it's this guy doing some boxing. And as you can see, it looks like his feet is moving the camera. The camera is swaying a little bit. So we're going to get a little janky motion. You see how the ground plane is moving a little bit. So the person who recorded this motion didn't necessarily do it for this purpose that I'm actually using it for. So anything that's moving in the background may cause issues. The fact that they have these bags in here, it may try to detect that black because as you can see, his shirt is black and this is black. But for some, some reason, I believe I used this already and I was able to extract some really good data. But as you can see, the feet moving forward a little bit. If the ground plane wasn't moving, if if this video camera was on a tripod, it would be much more accurate in terms of extraction. And that's what I know from all of my experiments playing around with cloud-based AI software. So we're going to go in and we're going to uh, type boxer. Doesn't matter what type of name you want. So as you can see, now it has this little crosshair thing that comes up. So we're going to trim it down on both sides. I didn't have that when I did um, Mozilla Firefox. So we're going to go hit the extract buttons where it says extract motion. And then we're going to control V and then hit OK. But you should be able to trim using your web browser. Through the web browser, it has these crosshairs that will show up on the far left or far right of the screen for trimming the video. Of your video footage because you don't want to actually use a full length video in here you want to have small video clips I would say 10 seconds to 20 seconds tops you don't want to have something that's too long you don't want anything in a minute long type of video footage that would be too much for the AI um, if you do try to extract that much motion it will take a, a longer time much longer time in the video extraction in terms of getting the motion capture data so once you're done it's going to show up in the far left corner below the other default models and what you can do is drag that and drop it on whatever model that you want but we're going to drag it and drop it on our model file so these are my actual model files that are in the library so what it does is it will jump from this here it will literally jump inside the model so as you can see it changed the model's position and pose so what that means is that it actually got animated so when you hit the play button it's going to perform whatever it extracted so it may not be that accurate like i said depending on all the differing things that i talked about and mentioned when it comes to creating that video footage or choosing a video that has more stable motion in the background as well as in the foreground so here you go you got the motion now if you don't see that much of motion and you think it's supposed to be longer hit the stop and then you go to the end here that it says end. there's a start and there's an end and then there's a loop this is the play start and end points for the timeline so you can go in and I would recommend typing in like 500 or 1000. So what that means is that this is the playhead for how many keyframes is going to play. And keyframes, pretty much if you don't know anything about keyframes, in animation keyframes are a way for you to animate the joints and the bones of a 3D model. So you can go in and select individual bones or joints. And you can do that in Plask if you wanted to. But we're not doing anything like that but I can show you that in another video. But you got your animation. Let's show it again. We hit the play. And there the model goes doing its thing. So other than that, Joe Love and Peace to all. Mike Pugh signing off. But before I go, I wanted to show you one tip in terms of export. Say you wanted to export this model. What I recommend, the best format to export, when you go to the model file over here, that's how you would export. So you highlight 
but go over it you see how they highlight right click hit the right click mouse button on your mouse and then go to export the best format say if you chose to use the model on blender would be glb they have fbx fbx unreal engine glb and bvh glb is the best trust me i tested everything else that it has available which is fbx and bvh i think glb works how i want it and it's it works really well on blender so you hit export and then what that does is create a glb file send it to that file folder that you created for it and it is done and then we'll open up that file folder and here it is dot glb and then you can go on to blender if you're doing different things on blender whatever you choose to do i'll just show you all folks just for shits and giggles this part but you go in go to file go to import and then go to glb or gltf dot or 2.0 and then we will go to that file folder and click import and there goes the model and this is the play very very simple hopefully that helps you to get some stuff going on whatever tool that you choose to use but if you're choosing to use blender or whatever the case may be unreal engine pretty much that simple not really that complicated other than that i'm out of here and i'll see y'all folks in the next tutorials